All right, everybody, it's finally here. This is the RG351MB by Embernick. They write their name real big here at the bottom. I guess they really don't want you to forget. This is one of Amber Nick's many portable retro consoles I've had. Let me see, how many do I have here within like arm's reach? I have a few. This is not all I've had by this company. I've tried a lot of their systems and they are, they consistently offer a pretty decent bang for your buck. I think you're going to agree uh, in this case as well. So let me show you everything about the system, warts and all. Uh, and right off the top, I want to let you know, because I don't want, I don't want to make you watch the entire video to figure out if this is worth it or not. I think it is worth it with a few caveats. I think this is a great daily driver for your portable retro gaming needs. So let's go over the body of the device itself. The RG351MP is a little heavier than uh, some of the similar devices like the RG350 I have here. It's a little dusty as you can see, I haven't touched this thing in a little while. Now the main difference other than the metallic body that gives it that nice satisfying weight is the fact that they fixed the analog sticks. Now I've mentioned in previous videos before that I don't like how the designers of these portable devices for some reason, they feel like they have to mimic the switch's configuration when it comes to the analog sticks, and by that I mean how they're asymmetrical, right? So the left analog stick is above the D-pad, and then the right analog stick is below the action buttons. I really dislike that. That only really makes sense on a console like the Switch, that where, where you can detach both sides of the system and they each function as independent controllers. So yeah, in that case with the switch, the analog has to always be on the left hand side. That makes sense. However, not so much on a device like this where you don't detach anything. So I like that right off the bat. I like that they put the analog sticks uh, in a symmetrical position. Now it would have probably been ideal to have them position above the D-pad and the face buttons just because that would allow you to grip the device a little closer like this. This would give your hands something to hold on to. With this you have to kind of like hold it like this which is again it's better than having them offside which again better than having them offset but yeah, speaking of the analogs, another thing they fixed, I'm gonna bring out the RG350 here again to show you the difference. With the RG350, you can tell that the analogs, they protrude outside of the device quite a bit. So this makes it so that this device is not really pocket friendly. You can't really throw this in your pocket because this is going to snag and perhaps even break. In fact, I think you can tell that one of them is a little off center right here, you see? I suspect that I might have done this from trying to put it into the pocket of like, you know, jackets and stuff like this. This eventually will catch and this will keep putting pressure on that spring which will eventually lose some of its tension right so it's very nice to see that just like with the RG351 V that I got here it's recessed into the system so this is not going to catch on clothing uh, as easily so I'm gonna show you here you see that makes it so it's much much easier to pocket this machine so let's take a look at the design here at the top you have the two sets of shoulder buttons L1, R1, L2, and R2, and they're nice and clicky, very satisfying. Then you have an OTG port here. You have the headphone jack and the charging port right here. I, this is gonna be a minor thing, but I like that they're labeling these now because I think it's not the case with the, yes, no. So with the RG350, one says USB one and the other says USB two, not really telling you what, what does what. So it's nice that it's labeled. However, it did lose the HDMI out not super happy with that even though I didn't really use it as much on a portable device I end up just not using it that much so perhaps this is a bit of a nitpick on the side here you have the power uh, button which also doubles as a sleep switch I really like that a lot of these devices uh, at least it used to be the case they didn't have a dedicated sleep button and that makes it so it's not so convenient to pull it out of your pocket for a quick game session and then put it back in your pocket. So I'm happy that this is available now. At the bottom you have the dual speakers which are pretty loud for a device this small and two micro SD slots. TF1 is where the operating system lives and TF2 is where your ROMs are going to be. This device did not come pre-installed with a whole bunch of ROMs like is the case with some of them. So I'm just using the micro SD from the RG351V. Now the advantage of doing that is that I already have a bunch of save uh, games here. 
so it was very easy to just transition from one to the other. Now, the only possible negative thing I want to point out is this volume rocker here. So my unit, I'm not sure if you can tell in the video, but it's a little defective. The button is a little recessed into the casing in a way that, unlike the analog stick, was not supposed to be. So this is clearly a problem in quality control. Now for years, I've heard horror stories about quality control issues with these Chinese retro portable devices. And I guess I'm pretty lucky in that I've had so many of these over the years. So this is not even like a 10th of how many I have. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know, I have a ton of these. Uh, this is just what I can fit in two hands. And I have never had an issue like that that I can think of. Luck of the draw, I suppose. I did talk to the Banggood representative and she did say that in cases like this, uh, a customer can request a refund. So there is that. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that because this is the very first time I've had an issue like this, this is not quite as widespread as some uh, forum posts would have you believe. I suppose it makes sense, right? Because people only say something typically when there's something wrong with the device. Not a lot of people, the however many millions of people have bought these things, will go to say that their unit works just fine, right? So yeah, a little bit of a bummer. Thankfully, it is possible to adjust the volume using a, a combination of keys here. I'll show you a little bit later in the review. So, you know, minor, minor qualm, a little bit bummed out, but it's not, you know, not a deal breaker here. Of course, for you, uh, it could be different. Now, let's take a look at the devices that this thing emulates. So at the very beginning here, we have um, CPS-1. I'm not a huge arcade person, so I usually skip these. CPS-2, CPS-3. Oh, also, one thing I should mention, I'm showing you here the way I got the system right out of the box. I understand that a lot of these devices usually have some kind of custom firmware that massively improves the experience of playing with them. Some have better uh, compatibility with some games and stuff like that. And it's relatively easy to modify these for to the most current firmware. However, I just don't have the patience to do that and I like to be able to recommend things the way they are. I don't want to say to you like, oh, you should definitely buy this, this is great, and then give you a whole bunch of homework to make it worthwhile. I prefer to review these things as is. And if I really fall in love with the machine, then I go through the trouble of installing custom firmware and things like that. So everything you're seeing here is pretty much the way it came out of the box. So um, CPS3, you got Dreamcast. I was surprised with the performance here. However, because I'm not a huge Dreamcast guy, I don't have a whole lot of games here. I have um, just, you know, three of the biggest classics, I guess, like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You have Family Computer, so Japanese NES, basically. Now, this here upsets me. This is something that these companies sometimes do. They number the ROMs in a way that makes it impossible to find them by alphabetical order. Thankfully, this only happened with the uh, um, the Famicom here, the NES, there's Final Bird Neo, there is a Game Gear, the primary competitor to the Game Boy, which I guess, you know, you could say was superior to the Game Boy in a lot of uh, aspects. And of course, my beloved Game Boy, as you can see, oh my god, I love Alleyway. I love this front end here. So you get a little screenshot of the game and the box art uh, and the cartridge, really small there in the corner. Uh, I just love this. This allows me to actually get a, a, a decent idea of what a game is like, because a lot of these games, mind you, I was familiar with their names from like compilations when you download like a whole bunch of, like back in the days of downloading ROMs uh, from Torrent, which I haven't done in, I don't know, close to 10 years now. I've been in this scene for so long, I just don't have to download ROMs anymore. I would see these names, right? Uh, and I had no idea what the game is about. Now this gives me a better understanding of what the game looks like and perhaps, you know, some of them sometimes will pique my interest, right? So I love that. Next you have Game Boy Advance, all the classics you'll find here. At the top here, I'm not sure if you could tell, some of these games have a little star next to the name. That means I just favorited them. So I'll show you here how this works. It's really cool. Uh, Aladdin, here we go. I assume this is, yeah, it must be a remake of the SNES title of the same name by Capcom. Great game. If you press Y, it'll take a little while because I'm assuming there's so many games in the list. And then it puts a little star next to it and it goes to the very top of the list. That makes it a lot easier to find your, your favorites, right? So as you can see, a bunch of games here. Next you have Game Boy Color, uh, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, as it was better known all over the place that was in North America. MSX, I, I don't think I've ever played a single MSX game. Uh, Nintendo 64, I was actually surprised by the performance. I want to show you a Nintendo 64 game because N64 titles are notoriously problematic to run on these emulating machines. So, as you can tell, no sound issues that I can that I can notice here. 
performance seems really good. Now, with Nintendo 64 titles, I've noticed, uh, you usually have a lot of problems with uh, rendering some of the layers in the menus. The games look fine, but then the menus kind of look all warped and some colors are missing, some elements are missing. Not the case with Mario Kart 64 here. I'm gonna put, let's try here, okay, let's just do 50cc. Because I'm a basic bitch, I'm gonna choose Mario. I always choose Mario in every single Mario Kart I've ever played in my life. I'm such a gaming basic bitch, I realize now. Alright, let's just pick whatever. Just wanna show you here the performance. Now, of course, this is not the best way to measure the performance of, uh, of N64, because Mario Kart tends to run a little better than most. Now, what are the controllers here? Okay, so... Pretty flawless, I wanna say. Sound is good, uh, frame rate is good, controls are just nice and tight. I love, like, I can see myself, if every other N64 game has similar performance, in fact, I'm curious now, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the other one. Let's, uh, let's look at another N64 game, because Mario 64, I think, and, and Super Mario 64 are basically cheating. They tend to run really well. Um, let's try uh, Cruising USA. Oh, I used to love this game on the arcade. I know I just mentioned I wasn't a huge arcade guy. I guess I should amend that by saying I wasn't a huge beat em up arcade kind of guy. But these uh, racers, House of the Dead, things like that, I was actually a pretty big fan. Okay, whatever. Oh man, this is like, oh, the arcade was, oh, I love it. Oh, not now, not now. Now, this, this is what. N64 performance usually looks like. It's probably the best selling point of something like the Switch Online expansion. Oh, I think I went into first person. How do you accelerate? Is it? I forget how to even. Okay, here we go. Wow. Yeah, this is not. Okay, so as you can see, not super great. I would not recommend this device for somebody who's who wants to emulate N64 titles. Let's get out of here. Let's close that. Then again, I, I wouldn't hold this against the RG351 MP because N64, like I said in the very beginning, notoriously a little troublesome to get running well. Uh, let's try one more here. What do I got here? I didn't have an N64, so I'm not super familiar with the library, with the exception of games that I played on other systems like Mortal Kombat 4 here. Let's see, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 I know runs well because I was playing it last night. Okay, see, there's a layer missing. So like when you get to the next one, it just goes into the next uh, the next area without like the little, you know, wheel turning effect. You cannot go wrong with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, man. Oh, this is great. Now, I didn't play it so much on the uh, on the N64. This is one of, like this is a, a quintessential PS1 title for me, as far as I'm concerned, right? But it runs really well. The audio stutters every now and again, so it's a matter of uh, the games that you want to play. Some games will run better than than others, but it's uh, runs really well. Like N64 emulation has gone, has come a long way on these devices. So let's get out of this here, okay? There's Nintendo DS emulation on this, which I would not recommend for the obvious reason. DS stands for dual screen. This only has one screen, and it's not a touch screen, so I just kind of skipped this over. I don't see anybody having any fun playing this. I don't even know why they included that. And there you have it. Oh, wait, there, wait, there's some more. There's Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color. You got the PC Engine and PSP. Now PSP is also a little bit hit or miss. It's kind of like N64. Some games run relatively well, others not so much. Loco Roco is one of the ones that runs really well. Now let's see how well this runs. Okay, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, come on. Okay, let's see. So a little bit of stutter there in the beginning, but runs really well. See, as, as new elements show up on the screen, you get a little bit of stutter. But it actually, not bad. Like, I could, I could see myself playing, playing this. And I have multiple PSPs, so I don't need to emulate it like this. But I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind using this to play PSP titles, actually. Mind you, some of these slowdowns in uh, Maverick Hunter X, now, mind you, some of these slowdowns, if I recall correctly, were even present in the actual official version of the game. So, something to consider. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna save it, why not? <laughs> don't, wanna, don't want my hard work to go to waste. Oh. 
X confirms. There we go. So let's exit here. All in all, I think this is a great way to experience these games. And finally, PS1. Now, PS1, I don't even think I have to show you because PS1 just runs really well on pretty much anything. Uh, I'm playing through Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is all, an all-time classic. I have Warcraft 2. This one doesn't have the little thumbnail here because I added this myself. So I have to find something that looks like this for Warcraft 2. Otherwise, my OCD is going to kick my ass. But... Finding out that so many classic RTSs had been ported to the PS1 in the 90s was a it just changed my life in, in the greatest way imaginable. I have a whole video on classic PC RTSs that were ported to the PS1 and if you're a big fan of real-time strategy like is my case, you're going to love being able to play these games portably. Anyway, so that is the RG351 MP. There's a link down in the description of where you can buy your own. And if you have any questions about the device, let me know. I'll try to answer as many as I can there in the comments. And that's it. If there's any other devices you'd like me to review here in the channel, just ask me. I'll try to get my hands on it. But that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.